Hey, Video Diary. So an article popped up on my uh, news feed that had a father who looked like a me type and a son that looked like a forest type. And they're both smiling, maybe the father a little bit more than the son. And it said in the caption, opioid crisis. I'm uh, just trying to remember exactly, but uh, uh, approximating opioid crisis being re-seen as uh, an illness, not as a character failing. And I couldn't even read the article, so I don't speak from uh, directly saying something about that article, but just the headline is, you know, is enough to get the gist of kind of what is in the air about the op opioid crisis. At least that's the headline. Maybe it's a deeper crisis with addiction, which includes cigarette smoking, alcohol, gambling, you know, all of them. Maybe it's about addiction. And, and the opioid is just an addiction that's so powerful and potent and dangerous and stupid that the... The reliability of death is is high, and the reliability of a, a crappy life uh, is probably 100%. So, is it a, a an illness? Did my son die of a disease? Or did he die of a, a character flaw? Um, like a weakness, giving in to to his addiction. Um, so I'm asking myself that question, and I I can't go all the way to either side of this position and say he was fully out of his mind and out of control and uh, or or the drug had taken his will you know like minority report you do it one time and you're just you know you are just a slave a robot to the other extreme that he betrayed He betrayed me, his family, himself, life. There's an arrogance. I call it an arrogance. Um, when you risk things that are disproportionately precious... you know, to, to something like that, like losing your whole life. I don't know if there's any ever, you know, good reason, reasoning to say, hey, I want to start using heroin. I remember periods in my life where I was, you know, super depressed and oppressed. I was physically abused, I was sexually abused. I I had a lot of weird issues. Uh, it just comes up, you know, it just comes into, you know, in your personality. So I understand my desire to medicate was always predicated on, I mean, it had to do with, with covering up the pain 
but uh, I just love a few many things too much or enough things. I loved enough things. Really loved and still do. That I didn't want to do that artificial the artificial thing. So is it a character flaw? What Forrest did? Is it show that he had some flaw in his character? Uh, or does he get a free pass? So I'm not answering it, I'm asking it. And, uh, and with all the people losing people, you know, once you lose somebody, like this, you know, like, like in a, in a sort of violent criminal kind of way, like, like anything from murder to drug OD for a young person, um, you know, once you lose somebody, you become aware of all the other people that are losing people. And sometimes I feel like I don't have a right to to complain about losing just one son, my only son, when there's so much, you know, death. And sometimes death is accidental, like physical catastrophes and natural disasters. Sometimes it's an assassin, one person perpetrating an, an, a completely disproportionate amount of suffering, even though one, one killing by an assassin is too much. I feel like I'm supposed to just suck it up, you know, like, oh, you, you had a kid who did something really stupid. He was a drug addict. I'm not going to feel that bad for you or for him because he could have had his life, but for his weakness or his justifying, rationalizing, his deciding. What is the word? What led... I'd like to ask Forrest, what led you to want to go back after four and a half years clean? I understand triggers, I understand all that, hunger, dependency, but we're talking about heroin, you know, and I guess the dangers of it, you know, to an addict or, or somebody who's willing to lie to themselves, it's, it's, it's such a great thing that you will you will talk yourself into it. Because he must have. Because he, he must have deliberated in a very specific way. My son was very smart. And, and he was also very naive. He would, he would do that thing like, oh, it'll work out because it always does. And I'm like, no. It, it, it doesn't always work out. You have to plan when possible. So we, we would often chuckle about assumptions. Like, please don't make assumptions. Please make, you know, preparations. Take care of your future self. Pay your bills. Take care of your shit. Don't expect other people to do that. Clean your house. Clean your room. You know, be a good person. 
He was, he was a loving, kind person. He protected people. You know, so I, I know, I know the kind of person he was, because, like I said, we were similar. And, and there's, I have to admit, there's something deep about my son that I did not know. And that he did not wish to share. I mean, he wasn't asking me like, hey, dad, help me. I'm feeling like using and, and talk me out of it. He, he completely decided to use and did everything he could in his actions for a couple of months at least to be, you know, super normal. It's very disturbing. Because the person was so close to death in your presence, in my presence, in our presence, in our family's presence, in his friends. We were all together. And he was just inches away from death then. He could have died when he was on this trip. Because when you're shooting up, you're being an, uh, a junkie, because that's what you are, you, you can die at any minute. Like It's, in, it's completely indifferent. It doesn't have anything to do. So there is some, you know, I'm, I'm feeling some, I don't know why I call it character failings, but like, I, I keep saying like, come on, what the fuck, what do you, why would you do this? Especially you, why would you do, why would you throw away all the amazing skills and pleasures that you have? Except that you got arrogant. That you believe that the rules didn't apply to you. Or do I just say you had no control? You had no willpower. And either way, I have to suck it up. Because I'm never going to get him back. I haven't even begun the process of looking at his pictures and his movies and his his life story and really feeling his body and hair and he had beautiful hands. His hands were the only thing that looked normal in his casket. They looked like he was alive. Everything else looked very dead. That's why I think there's no afterlife, because your body is the container of all of this information. It was gone. I, you know, when you really feel somebody gone, all those equivocations and mind dancing and silly myths and wish hopes and, you know, it, it, that's what I was talking about, like a sort of native spirituality. There is mystery, but it's not you know, these uh, sky afterlife Sabian based myths that we tell ourselves, religions. I know Forrest was his own person and he had to go his own way. I hope I did not repel him. Or expect too much. Because I, I was, I have high standards, but I'm, I'm easy too. But we don't know how we play out in each other's psyches, you know. I know I loved him. And I know 
that he knew that. Like, there's no, there's no question. Sorry, I'm getting emotional. There's no question about the emotional part. But the mind part, I'm still really, uh, I'm still really angry about this. And, you know, I have friends chiming in and saying, oh, you have to find forgiveness and peace and all that stuff. I, I don't know if I can ever forgive this. I don't think he would expect me to. But what I, I really do understand now is that each one of us has a responsibility to everybody. And we radiate out like we're all in a spider's web. And if you pluck one of us out, it causes such damage to the network that you're just not, you're not shooting up alone in your room. You're not just killing yourself. You're killing many people. You're harming many people.